my future boy. All right. So this is my review for the 1979 movie, Breaking Away. I wasn't really aware of this movie at all. Um, never never heard of it. It wasn't really in my, in my mind at all. Um, I kept hearing about it, though, on a couple of the podcasts I listened to. I listened to quite a few podcasts about movies. And there was one in particular that kept talking about it. There, I guess um, there's a comedian who was in Indiana... And so he kept talking about breaking away. And this is set in Indiana. So he kept talking about it, and then everybody, you know, was talking about it like the classic. And um, I guess it kind of is. Uh, I finally looked into it, and it popped up on Netflix. So I watched it. But I was actually surprised to find out it was nominated for like five Oscars and won one. So I was like, okay, I guess that's a little more, probably a little, a little more well known than. Uh, I thought it was at first. It won a Oscar for Best Writing, uh, written directly for the screen. And then it was nominated for Best Picture, uh, Best Director, uh, Best Music, and Best Actress in a Supporting Role. Um, that's the woman who plays the mom of the main character, which I'll get to. But it's uh, directed by Peter Yates. Um, I didn't really have a ton of recognizable movies um, in his filmography, for me at least, uh, he directed the Steve McQueen movie Bullet in 68, um, and then I guess he did one, The Dresser, which I guess is another movie that had some uh, Oscar recognition. I hadn't heard about that either, though, so. Anyways, Peter Yates is the director. And uh, like I kind of mentioned, it's centered around um, a group of kids in Indiana. Um, I guess it's Bloomington. It's where the University of Indiana is, and I guess they're not really kids, they're 19, so they're a year out of high school, and they're all just kind of, I guess, lost, you know, they don't, they don't really know what they're doing with their lives, nobody has a, a career ambitions, they're not in college, they're not really working, I think they're all working kind of at a, uh, a supermarket or something, they never show them working there, but then they eventually get fired, so they're not really doing much, they're just kind of hanging out for the summer, and kind of blazing around and um so I guess I get to the characters um there's four four main characters Dave is played by uh Dennis Quaid wait no oh, excuse me Mike is played by Dennis Quaid so he's probably the most recognizable mm, actor I guess um he's also kind of a surprisingly in shape he's really ripped in this and pretty young so that's Dennis Quaid is Mike um, and then Dave is probably, well, he is, I would say, the, the main protagonist. He's played by an actor named Dennis Christopher, I didn't really recognize. Uh, Cyril is played by Daniel Stern, most recognizable as one of the wet bandits or the sticky bandits from Home Alone. So I'm sure we're, a lot of us are familiar with him from the 90s. And then uh, Moocher is played by uh, Jackie Earl Haley. So he was in the Bad News Bears when he was younger, and then uh, more recently he was in like uh, The Watchmen. He played Rorschach, and he is the new Freddy Krueger and the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. So those are the four friends, and like I said, uh, Dave is the main protagonist, and he has become obsessed with uh, cycling. No, I don't know how long for like a maybe a little less than a year. He's been really obsessed with cycling, so competitive uh, racing. And he's really into, because the best cyclers, I guess, in the late 70s are the Italians. And so he's really obsessed with Italy and the Italian team. And he has come up with this Italian persona. I, apparently he listens to a bunch of Italian opera. And he speaks some Italian. And he acts like his family's Italian. He just acts like he's, you know, an immigrant from Italy, I guess. And it's pretty weird. And all his family and his friends think it's weird too. And I don't really know why he's doing it, but um, so yeah, that's that's Dave. Um, and then um, so he's obsessed with cycling. And then you know none of them are going to college, but they visit Indiana, University of Indiana, a couple times because they live in the hometown. And then one time Dave runs into a girl, and because he has this weird Italian persona, he acts like he's Italian and he's. Um, 
an exchange student or whatever, and he he's trying to date this girl, and he like, goes on a couple dates with her, and that's one of the main storylines, I guess, is him trying to be in a relationship with this girl and acting like he's Italian, but really not being Italian. So yeah. And then there's also a storyline of these four friends. They're called Cutters because their dads are, are or were stone cutters because there's um, a lot of, I guess, marble or granite stone cutting in that area. And so a lot of the parents uh, would cut the stones out of the quarry. So they get this name of Cutters. And even none of them are cutters, that's what they get called. And there's like a uh, rivalry between them and then the jock students at the university. So you get a lot of like the outsiders type of thing with uh, the greasers and the soches, or like the Revenge of the Nerds with the nerds and the jocks. You kind of get that dual, dueling factions going on with the cutters being our main group of friends and then like the uh, the rich jockey students at the university, so it's not like a direct translation to like like nerds and jocks because like Mike is in good shape and he wants to play football, and Dave is a really good cycler. So I mean, they're not like out of shape or anything, but it's just like the the two two uh, opposing forces, I guess. And so they get into it a couple times. Uh, they start fighting in a restaurant, and then. To solve it, they're going to allow this group of locals, the Cutter, their main group of friends, to enter into the uh, Little Indy 500, which is pretty popular. Um, it's like a it's, it's a bike, a cycling race at the University of Indiana, so it's like kind of like the Indy 500 for NASCARs, but it's for biking, bicycling. And so they're going to let them enter, even though they're not uh, associated with the university. And that's how they're going to kind of squash this rivalry and uh, that's kind of what they're working towards is to beat them I guess and um, so you have, you have quite a few things going on you have that going on with them trying to prove themselves to this other group of university students you have Dave trying to mm, start a relationship with this, this girl from the university and trying to figure out how to tell her that he's not Italian and there's also a lot of stuff going on with Dave's parents um, because like his dad is like car, owns a car dealership. He's not a cutter anymore, and I don't know. <laughs> it gets weird, but um, just a couple of notes I took. So you get Dennis Quaid's character, Mike. He's kind of the leader, sort of the leader of the group, but he's super childish and immature. Um, oh, he's and he's holding his friends back. You know, he. Mooch, Moocher is going to get a job at a car wash because he needs money, but uh, Mike tells him, you know, we're, we're all supposed to hang together, we're not supposed to have jobs, we're all supposed to be lazy together, and so he like, talks him out of a job, which is really weird, so like, that's the part of him holding him back, and then he goes on a little spiel at one point about wanting to play football and saying that he, he's good enough to play at the university, but then when they need his help at the, the final race... Uh, because their plan is to let Dave ride the whole race because he's so good, but then he gets hurt, and they need somebody else to get on the bike because they can switch whenever they want. And they need somebody to switch, and Mike's just sitting there crying like a baby. He's like such a he's like so immature. He's like you're supposed to be the most athletic out of them or the second most, and you won't even help. That's really weird. I didn't like his character at all. He has like no redeeming qualities, and. Um, and then you have Dave, who has this weird little phase he's going through, trying to be Italian. And the whole time I was like, I kept wondering who goes through a weird like self-identity phase at 19, just randomly, like just because he likes the Italian team and he likes biking. Like, okay, I get that, that's your hobby, but do you really have to put on like a whole facade that you're going to act Italian and act like your family is Italian when they're not and it's just weird and then then his father uh, Dave's so his parents his dad's just really condescending and negative about everything and just tells him 
you know, he's dumb, he can't do anything, and then, I don't know, it's a weird relationship, like, okay, you're trying to build this tension between the parents and the son, but they do it in a weird way. The character that I felt the, the worst for is probably Cyril, who is Daniel Stern's character. Um, at the end, when they are at the race, the little Indy 500, everybody's celebrating towards the end, and everybody has somebody to celebrate, like, Dave, spoilers, whatever, uh, Dave's made up with his parents, they like him, uh, Mike's there with his brother, uh, Moocher is engaged, or uh, has, like, a wife, they're, they're celebrating, and then you see Cyril, and they kind of make a point to focus on him, and they show him, and he doesn't have anybody to celebrate with. He's just, he's just there alone, and I was like, that's sad. And you see, you could feel that there was potentially a really good story, backstory for him. Um, you know, why there's nobody there supporting him. He kind of mentions his family throughout, but it doesn't get explained. So I thought that was kind of a waste and could have been something meaningful. Um, but other than him, Moocher's fine. Jackie Earl Haley's character, he's, he's okay. There's nothing wrong with him, but I didn't. I didn't like Dennis Quaid's character, Mike. He's super childish and immature about everything, pretty much. And then Dave is just—he's okay, but you know he has that weird persona of he's so obsessed with this Italian thing that he's gonna act like he's an Italian. It's just kind of—I don't know—didn't work for me. And I guess I guess the movie hasn't aged well. Um, I don't know if it ever was good. I feel like if I watch this. When it came out, I wouldn't think it's that great. I don't think it's Oscar-worthy either. I don't think... And, like, his mom, the woman that plays his mom, was nominated for an Oscar. I don't think that is an Oscar-worthy performance at all. So, I was surprised that it had all these Oscar award nominations and that it won one. And, uh, I'm also just surprised to hear that, you know, some people talk about it as being a classic, like, when, like when I first heard about it in the podcast and stuff, so... Um, I'm only giving it a 2.5 out of 5. I guess if you're really into cycling, I've heard people say this is like the definitive movie about bike, bicycle racing, which is sad. Um, hopefully that'll be changed soon. I know there's a, a biopic about Lance Armstrong coming out with Ben Foster playing him, so that should be really good. But um, it's on Netflix if you really want to watch, I guess, early Dennis Quaid or any of these guys, Daniel Stern or Jackie Earl Haley. Sure, throw it on, but I would skip it. I'm not recommending that you, you watch it. You're not missing out. If somebody says, oh, you missed out on you never seen Breaking Away, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> so, yeah, um, at 13 minutes here, so I'll, just, I'll, I'll stop it there, and um, so that'll be it for this one. Okay.